Well, praise the Lord. I tell you what, I'm excited about a new series. I'm starting a new series. I'm going to start it tonight. I'm going to pick it up on, on Sunday, maybe a little bit, uh, depending on uh, how our uh, missions meeting uh, goes on Sunday. I'm super excited about that. But this series that we're beginning is called uh, The Blessing. Everybody say The Blessing. The blessing. Say The Blessing. And tonight's message is entitled, Heirs According to the Promise. I want to talk about the promise a little bit. It's funny that before I begin a new series, I always seek God, you know, Lord, what does the body need? Uh, what are we supposed to be ministering on? And then usually Debbie will tell me, and I'll, I'll start with that. And, and I will get it from, yeah. And uh, God will reveal to us. And then... Um, uh, he, he just spoke to my heart so clearly about the blessing. And uh, as a pastor, I understand that the ministry of Christ, uh, as revealed in Psalms 23, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. He is the grand shepherd, the great shepherd, uh, the chief shepherd, the Bible says. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so shepherds seek to take their flock out of want and take them into a place of blessing. And where the green pastures are, lead them beside still waters. Amen. And so it is our desire, Debbie and I, and the leadership of the church, that we uh, help people get from a place of need into a place of plenty. We want you to have life and life abundantly that Jesus talked about. And so as an under-shepherd, I desire to do that which Jesus did, that we get, get as a congregation, that we get from a place of want to a place of no want, no lack, no limit, no loss. Come on, say amen. And I want to get you to a place that you're comfortable with that idea. In fact, that starts to burn in your heart, that God desires you to be blessed. And I'm going to show you tonight exactly that he does. God wants you to be blessed. It does not offend God when you seek the blessings of the Lord. In fact, he set it up so that you would be blessed. Now, you got to have better amens than that. Come on, say amen. And so, uh, I want to get into this message tonight. We'll do a li this little study tonight on the promise. So, if you have your Bible with you, lift it up and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'll never, never, never doubt this word because it is the word of God. I have ears to hear and a heart to receive, so teach to me the Word of God. Amen. So again, this sermon series is entitled, The Blessing. And tonight's message is entitled, Heirs According to the Promise. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 3. We'll begin in verse 26. And it reads... For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. That should cause somebody to say, praise God. Amen. Amen. Verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ, and that, that word baptized into Christ has the full uh, realm and revelation of becoming disciples of Jesus Christ, have put on Christ. Verse 28, for there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. So in verse 27, we put on Christ. In verse uh, 28, we are in Christ. Verse 29, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Come on, say amen. Now, if we are to understand life and life abundantly, we, we need to understand a couple of uh, concepts. And in John 10.10, we do know that Jesus came, that we might have life and life abundantly. But we must understand the concept of covenant and the concept of blessing and the concept of promise. Those three words. Tonight we're going to talk about promise, but we'll refer to the others briefly. We, we must understand covenant, we must understand blessing, and we must understand promise. 
These three terms point to the lifestyle that we should have or God wants us to have in Christ Jesus. That which comes through the cross. If we put on Christ, if we are in Christ, if we are Christ, then we have covenant. We have blessing. We have promise. (laughs) Come on, say amen. It's all good news. You can say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Believers, say that's me. Believers have access to all three of these principles and uh, concepts. We have access to the blessing, we have access to covenant, and we have access to the promise. Now, if you trace all three back, you can go all the way back to the Garden of Eden, and you see all three at play in the garden. First, regarding covenant. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26. Now, covenant is our relationship that we have with God. We have a covenant relationship with God. But covenant always defines relationship. And in the garden, the relationship that man had with God was defined in the following way. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. And so our relationship with God was one in which we are created in his image. He breathed into us the spirit of life. We were clothed in his glory. Uh, We had the same glory of God bestowed upon us, and he gave us dominion over the earth. That's a tremendous covenant. Praise God. We are in his image. We have his spiritual life. We are wearing his glory, and he has given us authority over everything. That's a good covenant. And the, the deal is, He's trying to get us back to that garden state again. Uh, We were designed to turn the earth into the garden spot of the universe. One day it will be again. That's where we're headed, glory to God. But in the meantime, he wants us to be children of covenant. He wants us to be children of blessing. He wants us to be children of promise. So covenant speaks to a relationship that you have with someone. It's a little different than contract contract is set up between it's a relationship again but it's based on distrust it's based on trying to outdo one one's trying to outdo the other if i if you have a contract with somebody really the person that you have the contract with they want you to sign because they really don't trust you and they're trying to get more from you than you're getting from them Isn't that really the way a contract works? It's a negotiation. It's a tug of war. It's not based on trust. It's based on law. But covenant is different. Covenant is based on love. And it's based on plenty. In other words, God sought covenant with man. And he wanted to give him everything because he loved him. He said, I'm going to give you my image. I'm going to give you my spirit. I'm going to give you my glory. I'm going to give you my dominion. Come on. That's a good covenant. I tell you, so covenant is different than contract, and we are children of covenant. It's because God loves us so much. Now, with the covenant comes blessing. With the covenant comes blessing. In fact, the blessing is the fruit of the covenant. So you start with a covenant, which is a relationship, but that relationship bears fruit fruit. The fruit is the blessing. All right. You're still in Genesis. Genesis chapter one. Look to the next verse 28. And God bless them. Blessing means that he is bestowing a gift upon you, either spiritual gift, natural gift, but it's, he is giving you something. Okay. He blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. He says, I want, I want you to be fruitful. I'm going to do everything that you can be fruitful. I'm going to do everything that you can, be, you can multiply. I'm going to do everything that you can spread the Garden of Eden throughout the entire earth. The whole earth is going to be your, uh, subject to your dominion. Come on. That's good fruit. Amen? And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 8, it says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put man who he had formed. So the fruit of this covenant is the very best of everything. He made a garden. He put the tree of life in the garden. He said, this is your home. It's the, it, it was the best thing. 
thing going in the universe, hallelujah, and we got it till we threw it away but we had it hallelujah and and that just shows you that that's God's design that's his desire that's what he wanted us to have until we threw it away through disbelief and rebellion but his original design was man created in his image clothed with his glory and filled with his spiritual life being able to utter his word and and create and have dominion over glory to God hallelujah hallelujah and then he took us as a blessing and put us in the very best of everything hallelujah so that's the covenant and that's the that's the blessing of the covenant but then you have the promise the promise is a very very important concept regarding the blessing and you also see the promise in the garden as well the promise is always related to the seed now you've heard me say before that God when he gives a blessing he gives it in seed form well we see this way back in the in the garden of Eden as well and we're going to see it play out in Galatians chapter 3 and Galatians chapter 3 is a powerful uh, theological revelation for the body of Christ. When you get into Galatians chapter 3, and we are in just a second, you're going to see that we have to live up to the potential of blessings that God wants to bestow in our life. Grand expectations! Hallelujah. So turn with me to Galatians. I mean, no, no, no. Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. And let's look at the promise. We've looked at the covenant, which is which is a relationship. We've looked at the blessing, which is the fruit of that relationship. Now let's look at the promise. And the promise is given through seed to restore the benefits of the blessing. When man rebelled against God, he was kicked out of the garden. Everything fell apart. But look, look what God did in, in Genesis 3, verse 14. So the Lord said to the serpent, because you've done this, you're cursed more than cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. Verse 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. Capital S meaning Jesus Christ. He shall bruise your head, you shall bruise his heel. Bruising the heel refers to crucifixion. Bruising the head means to utterly destroy the authority and power of Satan. So when man had all of the blessing... When man threw away all of the blessing, God bestowed the promise on man. Way back, as soon as man fell, God gave him promise. I said, as soon as man fell, God gave him promise. Now, there is promise still active in the, uh, from Old Testament to New Testament, still active in the life of the believer today. All right? So... Let me just sum up here real quick. The covenant defines the agreement or the relationship between two parties, between us and God. The blessing defines the fruit of the covenant, and the promise defines who is blessed by the covenant. And that's going to become more clear in just a moment, okay? Everybody say amen. Amen. All right, now turn with me to Galatians chapter 3. And we'll go back to our text verse in 26, Galatians 3 and 26, just to make sure we get the concept. We are heirs according to the promise. According to the promise. Everybody say, I am, I am. an heir, heir according to the promise. Now, an heir is a good thing. An heir means that you are receiving blessings into your life. You're receiving blessings into your life because they were promised to you. You are heirs according to something. According to what? A promise that was given to you. In other words, it is rightfully yours. All right? Galatians 3 and 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. 
As many of you who are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. All right? Back in in, uh, Genesis, we talked about the seed of the woman that would be at enmity between the seed of the devil. And that seed is Jesus Christ. We are in Jesus Christ. So that explains verse 29. If you are in Christ... You are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What puts me in Christ? Faith does. Faith puts me in Christ. So everything that Christ has done, all of his victories, all of his overcoming, I partake of that because I'm in him. All right? Praise the Lord. All right? Because I express faith in Christ... I am in Christ because I am in Christ. I am Abraham's seed because I am Abraham's seed. I am heir according to the promise. Do you see the chain reaction there? Okay, so what's the promise? I need to know what the promise is. What did God promise Abraham? I am blessed with Abraham's blessing. I'm heir according to the promise. What did God promise Abraham? Let me just back up to that last verse in 29. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. The promise of what? All right. Back to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now let's look at the covenant that Uh, God made with Abraham and the subsequent blessings and promise. Now, in in the Old Testament, well, throughout the Bible, there are many covenants made. But the Abrahamic covenant is kind of the granddaddy of all covenants, uh, especially for the New Testament believer. So you have the uh, the, uh, Eden, Edenic covenant covenant, the covenant made in the Garden of Eden, and then you have the, uh, the Abrahamic covenant, then you have the Mosaic covenant, covenant made with Moses, then you have the Davidic covenant, then we have the uh, covenant with Christ, the New Testament covenant. Well, here's the Abrahamic covenant, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I well, now, and here start, he starts to spell it out, okay? We've talked about land. Now, verse 2, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. You shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all families of the earth shall be blessed. Okay, now let's look at this for a second. He is telling Abraham, one, that he is going to give him a land of blessings. It's referred to as a land flowing with milk and honey. So just like he put Adam in the garden, he's going to put Abraham in a, in a place of blessing, natural blessings into a good land. Then he says, you will be a great nation. A great nation, he says. God, he says, God will bless him. His name will be great. So he will be powerful. He will be influential. He will be known throughout the world. His name will be great. He will be a blessing. So not only will he be blessed, but he will be blessed so much that he will be a blessing. Hallelujah. Others who bless him will be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those who curse him will be cursed. In him shall all families of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. Now, the key to the promise is that last phrase. In you All the families of the earth shall be blessed. Because this is where the seed comes into place. Are you all with me now? Because it is the seed. We're no longer talking about Israel. We're no longer talking about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. We're no longer talking about Israel. We're talking about all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In you all. 
all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, you have to admit that, that Abraham was blessed. He had everything. He had a relationship with God. He had power on the earth. He had riches. He had influence. His name was great. He was a blessing. Those who blessed him were blessed. Those who cursed him was cursed. But this last part, in him all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That's us. That's us. That means beyond his own family of his own children, beyond his own nation that became Israel, we're talking about all the families of the earth shall be blessed. There is an engrafting of the families of the earth into the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham is not isolated to Abraham. Other people get to partake of the blessing of Abraham apparently, and somehow they're engrafted into the blessing of Abraham. And let me tell you, Abraham was blessed. God gave him land. God gave him stuff. God made him a nation. God made his name great. He had no lack. And the blessings of Abraham are enjoyed by a certain group of people outside the family of Abraham. Are you with me? Now, that promise is repeated over and over and over again. If you look in Genesis chapter 18, verse 18, God tells Abraham again, All the nations of the earth shall be blessed in you, Abraham. Okay? Look, then you look to Genesis chapter 22, verses 16 through 18. This is when he was offering Isaac up to the Lord. He says, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, because you have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Verse 18, in your seed... All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. The blessings of Abraham is being passed on to the families of the earth. Hallelujah. Then look again, Genesis 26, verse 3. Dwell in the land. I will get now. This is to Isaac. Abraham, Isaac. This is to Isaac. Dwell in the land. I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give these lands. I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give your descendants all these lands. And in your seed all nations of the earth shall be blessed. Again, it's from the seed that the blessing comes. It's from the seed that the blessing comes, all right? Then to Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob in Genesis 28, verse 13. It says, Behold, the Lord stood above him and said, I'm the Lord God of Abraham, your father, the God of Isaac. The land which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. And also your descendants shall be dust of the earth. You shall spread across to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. And in you and in your seed... Seed, everybody say seed. seed. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. He doesn't say it once. He doesn't say it twice. He doesn't say it three times. He doesn't say it four times. He says it over and over and over again that through the seed, the families of the earth will enjoy the blessings of Abraham. We just got to get into the family of Abraham. That's the place to be, apparently, Amen. is in that family. How do we get in that family? We get in through the seed. It's through the seed that the blessings come. Well, how do we get into that seed? Praise the Lord. Now, turn with me to Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were promises made. Galatians 3 and 16. All right, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say into seeds as of many, but as of one. And to your seed who is Christ. All right? 
Now, look at verse 26, same chapter. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ. As many as you were baptized have put on Christ. Verse 28, you're all one in Christ. Verse 29, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So all the promises that were given to Abraham have been intended, and it goes way back to the book of Genesis, have been intended to be manifest through the seed of Abraham to all who put faith in that seed. I'm the seed of Abraham because I'm in Christ. You're the seed of Abraham because you're in Christ. You are heirs to the blessing of Abraham because you are in Christ. God is trying to get us back to the state of blessings in the garden, and he's working it through the seed. Hallelujah. 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 Now, The promise, if you're still in Galatians, the promise, because I want you to fully understand the promise. The promise is related to the gospel. Galatians chapter 3, verse 7. Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. This is only for those who express faith. As the scripture And the scripture, foreseeing that God would uh, justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham before saying, In you all nations shall be blessed. So the promise that all nations shall be blessed is equated to the gospel that was preached to Abraham. That's the good news. That's the good news to us, the gospel. Glory to God. Verse 9, so then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. The point is in Galatians 3 that there was a struggle between does the blessing come by the law or does the blessing come by faith? And and, and Paul is making the point. No, the blessing way preceded the law by 430 years when God spoke to Abraham and said, I'm going to bless you this way and bless you this way and bless you this way and not only bless you, but through your seed, all the families of the earth, those who have placed faith in Jesus Christ, they will be blessed as well. It's not by living up to the law. It's by living by faith the same way that Abraham was justified. All right, praise the Lord. So verse 9, so those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. That's one of the most important verses you're going you're gonna to lay eyes on, underline it, circle it, put a smiley face beside it, because those who are of faith, are you of faith? Yes. Are, you, are you born by faith, born again by faith? Yes. Do you walk by faith? Yes. Are, it, do the just live by faith? Yes. Are you a person of faith? Yes. Then the faith Those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Now look in verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. Okay? The law does not play into this at the moment. Okay? Verse 14. That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, spiritual life, spirit, everything that comes by the Spirit, the promise of the Spirit through faith. But the Scripture has confined all under sin, but the promise by faith in Jesus Christ is given to all who believe. So the promise... Of Abraham's seed is that there is forgiveness of sin to all who express faith in Christ, which opens the door to spiritual life and blessings. I'm going to say that again. The promise to Abraham's seed is that there is forgiveness of sins to all who express express faith in Christ, which opens the door to all spiritual life and blessings. Okay, I got a good amen on that. 
Okay, praise the Lord. All right, now, you're still in Galatians. Turn back to Galatians chapter 2. Can you hang with me for another minute? All right, Galatians chapter 2, verse 14. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, the truth of the gospel, the truth of the gospel... Peter was uh, fellowshipping with Gentile believers. When Jewish believers came into the house, Peter would separate himself from the Gentile believers and hang out with the Jewish believers, and Paul withstood him on that. He says, no, that's not right. You, you should not do that, okay? I said to Peter before them all, if you being a Jew live after the manner of the Gentiles, in other words, he was fellowshipping, fellowshipping just fine with the Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? In other words, why would you compel them to come under the law when, when the law has nothing to do with this? Okay? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Christ Jesus. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus. We are justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So in verse 14, when it talks about the truth of the gospel, the truth of the gospel, according to Kenneth Copeland, and that's a pretty good source, is the blessings of Abraham have come on Gentile believers, and they are Abraham's seed as well. Well, that's really good news because we're Gentiles. At least most of us here are. We are Gentiles. Amen? Amen. So now remember this. Remember this. Put this in your note. The, the promise identifies who is going to be blessed? The promise identifies all who express faith in Christ. The promise identifies who's going to be blessed. The covenant guarantees it will be upheld in the courtroom of heaven. And that's why in Galatians 3 and 15, it says, Brethren, I speak in the manner of men. In other words, I'll give you a human example. Though it is only a man's covenant, he says, I'll give you an example of man's law. If it's confirmed, no one annuls or adds to a covenant made between men. Uh, have you ever heard of an irrevocable trust? If it's irrevocable, no one can change it. Once it's been signed, it's done. There's, there's no updating it. There's no changing it. It is irrevocable. You can have a law that if, if you keep having, I mean a will, if you keep putting a new will and a new will and a new will, well, then you're looking for the latest will that disannuls all the other wills before it. But that's not the way. God's covenant is. God's covenant is an irrevocable covenant because it is based on a promise that he never takes back. Come on, say amen. Amen. To Abraham and his seed were promises made. He does not say, and to seeds as many, but of one, and to your seed who is Christ. And this I say that the law, which was 430 years later cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ that it should make the promise of no effect for if the inheritance is by the law it is no longer of promise but God gave it to Abraham by promise hallelujah, hallelujah. You say, what difference does that make? All the difference in the world. Because, because it is given by promise. And we are the seed of Abraham. We have rights to the blessings of Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's really good news. That's why it says in Romans 8, 16, and 17... The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. We are joint heirs with Christ. So we understand that the blessing is given by promise and it is enforced by covenant. Now, I want you to circle these two verses and I'm closing on this. Well, three verses. Galatians 3, verse 8. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. Say, that's me. me. Preach the gospel to Abraham before saying, In you shall all nations be blessed. Say, that's me. me. So then those who are of faith, say, that's me. me. 
are blessed with believing Abraham. Verse 14, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Say, that's me. In Christ Jesus, that we, say, that's me, might receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So what are we receiving? What is the blessing of Abraham? We've already said it. He was blessed with land. He was blessed with great nation. God said, I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing to others. Others who bless you will find themselves blessed as well. As well. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. Now, this is what I want to leave you with. We, as believers in Christ Jesus, are the seed of Abraham. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We are given blessings that are beyond our wildest imaginations. That's why the Bible says that he'll do abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Because we are the seed of Abraham, we have access right to heirs of all his blessings. Come on, say amen. Because we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, we have right to access to all the blessings that come through the cross of Jesus Christ. So, as your pastor, Debbie and I want you to have the revelation that you are a blessed people whether you understand it or not. Listen, you can be the heir of something and not be aware of it and not enjoy the blessings that are supposed to come to you. You can be an heir if, if uncle so-and-so passed away and he left you his fortune, but you don't know that he passed away or wrote a will with your name in it. You're not going to receive of that blessing. So much of the body of Christ does not understand that they are heirs according to the promise that the blessing of Abraham is theirs, that they are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, that God wants them blessed. God wants them to influence the world. God wants to make their name great. God wants to establish their influence to the north, the east, the south, and the west. That God wants to get every heavenly blessing to you, every earthly blessing to you. He wants to bestow gifts on you, not just spiritual gifts, but natural gifts as well. Because he was talking to Abraham about natural blessings. Yes, spiritual seed, but natural blessings as well. I want you to get the revelation of who you are in Christ and what is yours in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, that was introduction to our series on the blessing. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because we want you blessed. I said we want you blessed. I want want increase in your life. I want prosperity in your life. I want blessings. I want peace to flow through your life as a river. I want the blessings of Abraham to be manifest in your life. I want you to be able to look at every area of your life. And if it's not blessed to say, now, wait a second. This doesn't line up with the blessing of Abraham. I'm I'm supposed to be blessed in this area of my life. I'm supposed to be prospering in this area of my life. I'm supposed to be overcoming in this area of, of my life because I am heirs according to the promise and God never takes back his promise hallelujah praise the Lord 